Welcome back to the channel. Today we're continuing the interior work on the 240SX S13 hatch. But first, I wanted to share a quick clip of some of the footage I took at NISFest. I know I suck really bad at like capturing vlogs while I'm out and about. So I just took some clips and the reason I wanna share them is because I love seeing like built cars and finished projects. It always gives me so much motivation and they're just, they're always so nice to look at. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy. I need to get another S30, so bad. Ooh, damn. His goals, I, I really miss my, my dots and I should have kept it. Hope you guys enjoyed that clip and I promise I'll try to get better at capturing more stuff that I do out with friends that's car related. So for today's video, as I said, we're continuing the interior work on the 240SX and let me show you guys what we need to get done today because there's a lot of stuff that we need to do. First, I have a horde of parts here. These are all for the most part, all the interior pieces that go in the front of the car. So as you guys recall from last video, uh, we put in the dash, we put in the carpet, we put in the headliner. Um, but we're still missing a lot of the interior trim pieces. So that's what's on the table. That's what we're putting on today. I also have some other door cards that we're gonna be putting on the car because one, this is a brown door card. It doesn't match the other one. The ones that we have, I believe they're in good condition. <laughs> They've been sitting in storage for like three years as well. So I'm hoping they'll be good. I remember they were clean, so we'll see. Um, we'll be slapping on those door cards. And then lastly, we are going to be uh, converting our automatic seat belts to manual seat belts. And the reason I want to do that conversion is because it's one less thing that can fail with the car. Uh, those automatic seat belt motors and the little rails that go for them are known to go bad. So just one less thing to worry about. The mechanical ones are really reliable. Um, they work off of springs that really don't break. Um, so that's what we're converting them. It's just one less thing that I have to worry about in the future that could break and that will lead to me having to take the interior apart again and redoing them and all that stuff. So it's much more simple and it's a lot more reliable. I'm really digging this OEM look. It looks so good. Um, okay, so now that we're done, for the most part with that, um, I still have a few more trim pieces to put on, but for the most part, it's mostly done. Um, once we actually have a transmission in and everything, we could finish the rest. Um, also, I need a vent because mine is broken. So if you guys know anybody in LA, let me know. So now we're gonna move on to the door card. This is the old one. And so I pulled a new one out of uh, storage here and it's pretty clean. Uh, this color is slightly different than the one I have already. I'm gonna reupholster this middle section anyway. Uh, so for now I'm just gonna throw it on uh, just so that the interior matches. Um, the good part is that all the vinyl and everything here 
is in really good condition. There's no cracks or anything. So we're just gonna put it on real quick just to make the interior look a little bit better. All right, so that was pretty easy uh, to switch it out. So it looks way better. Uh, but now let us let me show you what we're doing next. The last part of today's video is going to be uh, converting the automatic seat belts to manual. Um, and the reason for it is, again, uh, they tend to go bad. And I personally like the way of the, the look of the manual ones. Uh, also, every time I would get in and out of the car for the automatic ones, I would always hit my head on the little thing that moves. So I like this. It looks super OEM um, because I did use a bunch of OEM parts from other cars. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that real quick and I'll move the seatbelt out of the way. Get a little up close and I really like the way it came out. It looks like if it was meant to be there. The first thing you'll need to do is find your seatbelts out of your donor car. These came out of a B12 Sentra, which I believe is the 89. I think the B13 ones also fit. You can also go with S14 seats, which are a direct bolt-on and no modification is needed, but they are much harder to find. They are way more expensive. In my area, S14 seat belts are maybe like between $100 and $200 for a pair. So that's way too much. Again, these are the central ones that I got at the junkyard for like $30. Um, the only issue with them is that you do need to modify them because this tab is too long and this tab is too long. And then you also need to redrill one of the holes, which I'm gonna show you how to do real quick. It takes less than five minutes and it's really easy. All you need is an angle grinder and a drill. So this is what you're gonna end up with. Um, again, I trimmed this because it was too long. I also drilled a hole here. Um, this is very specific to that B12 seat belt, but um, I just drill to the end of where this little groove is. I already measured it with the car and that's like the perfect location for that hole. And then for this one, I'm just using this square sort of cut opening. Um, I just took out this little tab um, and then that lines up perfectly but let me show you guys how it lines up on the car um if you are using different seat belts you may need to sort of drill your own holes but the idea is the same you just need two holes so that's how it'll look once you guys have this bolted down again just two mounting locations one down here one up here um the next thing we got to figure out is where the top of the seat belt is going to mount and you're going to use the stock uh, hole this is where the uh, automatic one was bolted before so this has to bolt here but before we do that we do have to put on the panel and the issue is that the normal automatic seatbelt panel doesn't have a hole for this so we're gonna have to drill into it the good thing is that i took my time measuring everything out and i found the perfect location uh, to drill out the hole and i'm gonna show you guys that right now so looking at it from the back side that's the top of the panel this is the bottom you're gonna see this mounting spot where this tab is um, you're gonna take your measuring tape and you're gonna uh, just have it up against the bottom like that. Um, and you're gonna measure half an inch and mark a dot. So this is how your first hole is gonna look like. Again, half an inch from that bottom section. Once you have that, once you have that, you're gonna put this just to open it up. So again, right where this part starts, that's where you want. And the cool thing is if you drill from the back um, in the front, it comes out super clean. And so if you've been at this far, all you have to do is bolt your seatbelt down right here. And that's mostly it. But before you can do that, 
Um, you do have to get a special bolt uh, because this bolt has to be somewhat long for it to be able to fit through here and bolt in all the way to the back of this without squishing your body panel. The other interesting thing about this bolt is that it's a standard size. I know that sounds odd for like a JDM car, but I think it's because of US regulations on safety that they have to use a standard size. So to save you guys some time and research, this is a uh, 716 fine thread. I believe it's 716-20 um, and this is three inches. You also have to put a bunch of spacers uh, that come with your seat belts so that it spaces it out properly and then you could bolt it down and tighten it again so you don't smash your body panel. Um, all your seat belts have like this, uh, this type of uh, washer um, with like a little spacer here. This is so that your uh, seat belt can swivel around even though you tighten the bolt. Um, it's like a smaller section so it could sit in there and it'll still be able to move around even though you put you tighten this so you're gonna pass this through and then you're gonna pass through all the other washers um there's you're probably gonna use a ton of them um also when you go to the junkyard um if you do take off the seat belts from the junkyard cars uh take all as many spaces uh, as many spaces as you can because as you're seeing from me I used a ton <laughs> and then so from here you're gonna put thread locker and then tighten it all right so assuming you did everything right this is how it should look um the seat belts that i had also came with this little clip that i just uh, bolted down into the chassis here this just kind of holds the seat belt down uh, but again uh, we have the main components um, this up here once it's bolted down this is what i was talking about earlier you want this to be able to move because as you're pulling your seat belt you want that to flex and so that's what i was talking about like these have like little washers in there so that this has play and you can still tighten this um i don't know if the camera will capture it but you can kind of see in here why you need so many spacers otherwise uh when you tighten this it's just gonna crush your panel um again the junkyard is your best friend to get those spacers <laughs> take as many as you can from other cars all the nissan ones are pretty standard so just take a bunch of those um, and then lastly, my seatbelt um, kind of bolts down right here into the carpet. Um, this is where the old uh, unit was for the other uh, seatbelt. So um, it's just a direct bolt on. So this is like 90% done now. Uh, the last thing you're gonna need um, is your last panel. And with this one, I'm gonna try to see if I can do it with one hand. Yeah, so what will end up happening is that you see right here, once you have this clipped in, this doesn't let the seatbelt retract. So that's an issue. The way I fixed it was that I just cut out the section like I did on this side and it's pretty easy. All you need is a Dremel, put a piece of tape and then you mark where you're gonna make your cut. So that's what I'm gonna cut out. And there you guys have it, check it out. So that's the little cutout I did. Um, you probably wanna double check it. Mine was a little crooked, but it doesn't look bad. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, you probably won't be able to tell unless you're like super staring at it. Um, you also probably will never have people in the back seats that are going to be staring at that little spot. Um, but yeah, I really like the way it came out. It looks stock. I like the OEM-ness of it. These are Nissan uh, seatbelts, so it just goes with the car. I'm so happy the way it came out. Um, I'm definitely going for that OEM Plus interior. There's the other side and I'm digging it. So that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I know that it was a little bit slower of a video than the other ones that I've done lately. Um, it was just a ton more work than I originally anticipated. Uh, but I promise, next video we're wrapping up the interior. We're gonna do the trunk. I'm gonna put some baller ass seats in it that I think you guys are gonna like. Um, and then from there, we're gonna move on to the rest of the car and we're gonna finish it up. So hope you guys are enjoying the content. And if you are, please consider subscribing and I'll see you guys next time.